Number one, um, you know, having a concept of rituals as anchors to kind of balance your day, balance your emotional household. Uh, Warren Buffett says that his, his uh, core, the core thing he looks for in CEOs is emotional stability, which is like one of my favorite things that he has ever said. Um, and you know, being an entrepreneur is a really wild emotionally ride, and if you have no anchor, kind of like keep you grounded emotionally, you go through those highs and lows at such intensity that at some point you become slightly schizophrenic and it's really hard not to mess with you emotionally and psychologically. Um, the, so I started uh, starting every, every day meditating, you know, about half an hour before doing it. So wake up, take some time for being before actually launching into doing. How do you influence others? for their own good, potentially? Or how do you put a team together that can harmoniously work together, even if people have different philosophies? So I'm a big believer that words don't teach. And uh, I think words can inspire. A lot of words written or spoken have inspired me to go and do things and then learn something. But eventually, at the end of the day, I find myself being most influential in a positive way when I don't tell people what they should do, but when I actually um, am a living example of that. So if I think that you can take more breaks, you can work less hours, and you can be a lot more productive than other people, then I think the most effective way to teach that is to be that person. And I believe that people just subconsciously are attracted to that. If you can have that calm energy, if you seem to be happy and really relaxed and balanced, you still kick everybody's ass in terms of productivity, people start like people start consciously or subconsciously trying to like follow your lead because they want the same results. When something is truly, really, really hard, um, not difficult, but just hard, it means that something is wrong. Either the timing is wrong, or the team is wrong, the people that are work trying to fix this problem are clearly not capable of doing that, or the tools that we're trying to use are the wrong ones. Um, so a lot of times when something is incredibly hard, uh, you know, I would then stop, you know, take a step back, look at it, and try to de determine should I be doing this, or is somebody else better at solving this problem? So can I, can I give this and delegate this to somebody else? If I can't delegate it, and if I'm the best, most qualified person, I'm struggling so hard, then is this really the right time? Do I really need to do this right now? Could I wait? Um, a lot of times you'd be surprised when you wait, those problems solve themselves, or they are not necessary anymore. A month later, this is not as, as a big of an idea or important as you thought. Having experience of building businesses that become more and more successful, and also having gone through some some not so successful experiences, have you found that there's a correlation between your level of happiness and how successful the venture that you're in is? And if not, when you're happy, what is it exactly about your lifestyle or what you're doing that you attribute that that feeling of happiness to? Where do you get the feelings from? And when you're not happy, what is it that is making you unhappy? So, um, so the answer is no. You know, funny enough, being in Success Magazine does nothing for how I felt that day. Like, just nothing. There's a moment where I was like, that's kind of cool, I'm in a magazine. And that's it. Like, that was all it was. It was just a moment. I was like, oh, that's really cool. All right, <laughs> you know, let's, let's to the next aisle and buy stuff because I need to go home. Um, so this is a really cool, cool graph. I don't do PowerPoint. Um, makes my life easy. I don't have to prepare anything. Um, but there's a, there's one little graph uh, to that that I wanna that I wanna share with you guys. Um, I was kind of waiting for an opportunity to go to Blackboard. Yeah. I've never been to school. Like, <laughs> uh, seems very appropriate. So oh, see, I already messed it up. Not clearly not qualified to do this. All right, so. Uh, this graph actually, I try to look at this like every week once and ask myself where I'm here. So let's, let's take this and let's say this is the, the success part of it, right? And you start a startup and it's kind of a, if things go well, no, no, great things. If things go well, it's kind of a, this, right? It's, success is never linear, it's never smooth, it's never just one thing, it's ups and downs. But if you're lucky, the trend is going up. Right, so this is a success. Now, if we look at it from a, you know, happy, unhappy point of view, the interesting thing is that emotionally, as humans, we 
we're not really good at having like full perspective and context on how we feel about things. Uh, emotionally, this graph looks something like this. This is how it feels, right? Whenever things go up, you're happy. Whenever things go down, you're unhappy. So emotionally, the, the company might become more and more successful, but emotionally, you're still just up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, all the time. And this is what, what is so tiring about being an entrepreneur. That's what, it's a roller coaster. This is not the roller coaster. This would be fun. You'd be like, all right, it goes up, it goes down, but it's going, you know, I can tell that we're at a different elevation level here than there, so things, you know, I can see that, and with that, I can get myself the feedback that you need that, hey, things are going well. Emotionally, you don't have that. Emotionally, all you compare it with is today's a good day and things go well, tomorrow's a bad day, things go bad. And you don't say, yeah, but when things go bad today, it's not the same that when things went bad three years ago. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, it makes no, no difference to you. You just feel bad. You feel challenged. And it's, and it's the thing that a lot of entrepreneurs go for. They're like, we started and everything is so challenging, but when we launch, things are going to be better. And then they launch, and now we launched, and it was cool for a moment, but now no users are coming. And when the user, when users are coming, things break if it's a technical product. If we fix all this and we only have growth, things are going to be better. And then you're in that, and you're like, now we need money. So if we raise money from investors, things are going to be awesome. And you raise money from investors, and you're like, now we have to hit those milestones and we have the board of directors that we have to manage. I need to keep my job now. I gotta work for somebody. And if we only hit these kind of milestones and we hire these people, then life will be amazing. And every time you go to a higher level, your problems just change, right? Your, your successes look different, but your problems are also much bigger from a scale. Now all of a sudden, you know, this big company is about to crash you or employee loss, and so the board will wants to get rid of you. No, you get you know, a little bit more attached to that. It's not like you and your friend and pizza and Red Bull at your house, you know, you know, watching the social network and coding something. Now, all of a sudden, there's real responsibility and a sense of loss and things like that. So emotionally, it's just this tiring up and down and up and down. And, and the hardest thing to do is actually to kind of incorporate habits that force you to see this trend line. Right? And not just you, your entire team. There's a difference between being in love with the idea of something and actually being in love with something. Mm. And I think we all are victims of that in one way or another where you pick something because you think that's going to make you somebody or you think people will think and feel a certain way about you if you're you know, pick, doing this that's one right. thing or choosing this one person uh, over another because you, a lot of us are measuring our self-worth by what we think others will think of us and what we do. And it's challenging not to do that and realize that I love the job because I love the idea of who that job mm -hmm. makes me versus I love doing the work.